Hey, welcome to Highguard Creations. The next group of commands I will do have the two global space and two uniform space commands. As always, back here in the rmb.cpp script. I will locate these two commands in here. Right here, as you can see, there is the two global space command and below the two uniform space command or rather the two functions. And as you may have noticed, the two functions are inside the conditional if structure and have the no cache condition. What does this mean? It means that the two commands I need will only appear in the menu if we are not in prox mode. And this is very important for the correct functioning of 3D code. So, you also need the if no cache conditional structure for these two commands to work correctly, okay? Good. First thing you do is select the two global space function and also the two uniform space function. Once the two functions are selected, I'm going to press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut. And I'll paste it right here under the save commands. I'm going to press Ctrl V to paste. And here I have my two functions. Great. Now, what is missing? Just the if conditional structure with the no cache condition. So, I will select this entire line, including the open curly bracket. I will press Ctrl C on my keyboard to copy. And I will paste it on top of the two global space function. Ctrl V. Perfect. And as you know, if there is open curly bracket, then I need the closed curly bracket. So, pay attention to that. Because right now, I don't have the closing curl bracket. So, I position my cursor right here. I go to the keyboard and I press the key, close the curl bracket. Great. Now, to prove to you that everything is working correctly, I'm going to save the script, close it, minimize, back in 3D code, accept my changes by pressing the OK button. And now, when I press the right mouse button, I will have it here, correctly. The two global space and two uniform space commands, just the way I planned them here in my list. Right? Right. <laughs> the next group I have planned have the transform, snap to ground, and lay on ground commands. And looking here in the 3D code menu, I can use the retopology related commands as a reference point because right below the retop via decimation command, I will find the three commands I need. Knowing this information, I will go back in the rmb.cpp script and I will locate the functions related to retopology here inside the script. Right here. I have the first autopo related function. And right after that, I have the retopo related function. So, below, I have the three commands I need. I will select the first function, transform box tree, until the end of the lay on ground function. And I'm going to press Ctrl X on the keyboard cut. I'm going to go to the top of the script, guide me through the separator function, menu separator. I'm guiding myself until I find the last separator bar or menu separator function. Because right above it, I have the two commands, two global space and two uniform space. And I need to position the new commands right below these commands. I created some space by pressing the enter key. And right here on this line, I'm going to press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste the three commands that I need here. Now, I'm going to copy a separator bar, selecting 
The Holy Man Separator Function, copying with Ctrl C on the keyboard, and I will immediately place it on the Delay on Ground function, pressing Ctrl V to paste the new separator bar, and take advantage, I will press the Enter key to create more space here. Great. Now, to prove to you that everything is correct, and the result will be exactly what I have planned here in the list. I will save the script, close it, go back to 3D code and press the OK button. Now, I will press the right mouse button. And as you can see, underneath the two global space and two uniform space commands, I have my new group with the transform snap to ground and lay on ground commands. And if you come over here on the side, on my list that I have planned, I will have transform, snap to ground and lay on ground. Exactly the same, right? Right. <laughs> the next group of menu commands that I have planned are the close holes, object by separate, thicken, extrude, and flip commands. There are two things I want to talk about this group of commands. The first is that this group has commands that will only be shown depending on the mode we are currently using. And the second one is that I will reposition some commands to have the same result as I planned, okay? I will go back to the rmb.cpp script. And according to the menu list I have planned, I will need to find the surface mode related commands here inside the script, which are the close holes, objectify separate, and thicken commands. So, going down the script. Right here, I will find most of the commands I need. Right inside this conditional if no cache structure. As we already know, for that the specific commands related to surface mode and voxels mode, as well as other commands, can be shown correctly in the right click menu. It's necessary that the program checks which mode is being used at the moment, right? Right. <laughs> this means that for our commands that are inside conditional structures, it will be required that these commands are kept inside their respective conditional structures. And, in this way, avoid any program malfunction, ok? Great! In this case, for the specific surface mode and voxels mode commands, I will have to respect and have all the conditional structures. From the first conditional structure, if no cache, that checks if we are not in prox mode to the change conditional structure if surface that checks if we are in surface mode or voxels mode to precisely be able to show in the menu the related commands of the checked mode, ok? Having said all this, first of all, I will select the whole if else change structure. From the beginning, of the if surface to the closing curly bracket of the else code block. Once I have selected what I need, I will press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut. And right here, after the lay on ground function and the separator bar, I'm going to press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste the commands. Great. Now, 
pay very, very attention here. As you know that this if-else chain conditional structure was inside the if-no-cash conditional structure, so immediately I should add the if-no-cash conditional structure here too, right? Right. <laughs> if I do not add the if no cache conditional structure, I will cause problems in the operation of the program. Because for this command to work properly, it's necessary that you are not in prox mode, okay? To do this, I will select the if no cache until after the open curly bracket. I will copy it with Ctrl C on the keyboard. And I will paste it right here on top of the conditional structure if surface. Pressing Ctrl V on the keyboard. Great. But pay close attention again. <laughs> It's missing a very important thing, which is what? The closing curly bracket of the if no cache conditional structure. For this, I'm going to position my cursor here, and on the keyboard, I'm going to press the close curly bracket. Right after the closing curly bracket of the else command block. Perfect. Now that I have all these commands positioned here, I'm going to reposition the order of some of the commands to be the same as the list I planned, okay? As you can see in the list, I have planned that the ficking command will be under the object file separate command, but in the current 3D code, the ficking command is above the closed holes in surface and the object file separate commands. To fix this, I will select the entire create surface shell function that is equivalent to the speaking command in the menu. Once the function is selected, I'm going to press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut. And right here, after the decompose function, which is equivalent to the menu command object by separate, I will paste the create surface shell function by pressing Ctrl V on the keyboard. At this point, I will do one extra thing, which I had not planned in my menu list here on the side. Inside the conditional structure else, which are the commands related to voxels, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I am here, so I can reposition some commands as well. To do this, I'll select from the beginning the close holes function to the end of the close inner tunnels function. Press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut, and right here on top of the make hole function. I will press Ctrl V and paste the two functions. Great. I'm going to go back to the if no cache conditional structure down here. Because the next function I need is the extrude VO function, which is equivalent to the extrude command here on the menu. Select the entire extrude VO function. I'm going to press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut. And right here, after the closing curly bracket of the else command block, I'm going to press Ctrl V on the keyboard so I can paste the extrude view function, right? Right. <laughs> According to the list I have planned, only the flip command is missing. So, I'm going to go back to the script and I'm going to look for a function related to the flip command. As you can see, here is the flip 
function, but this time it's not just a single line of code. The flip function has a block of commands, okay? So, to select the whole function correctly, I will pay attention to the open curly bracket and the closing curly bracket because this is equivalent to the command block of the flip function. So, I will select from the beginning of the flip function until after the closing curly bracket of the flip function command block. Great! Selected everything I need, I will press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut. And back up in the script, right here, after the closing curly bracket of the if conditional structure, I'm going to press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste the whole flip function. Great! The last steps that are missing are Add a separator bar after the flip function. To do this, I just need to come up here, copy the entire menu separator function, press Ctrl C on the keyboard to copy, and right here, after the closing curly bracket of the flip function, I will press Ctrl V to paste the new separator bar. The last thing is to delete the blank lines and so make the script cleaner. I will do that now. Great! Once again, I will prove to you that I have done everything right here in this script. I will save this script. Close it. Back to 3D code and press the OK button to confirm my chance. And now, when I right click on the Rhino, as you can see, I have exactly the same group of commands that I planned for my menu. With the commands close holes, object by separate, picking, extrude, and flip right, right. <laughs> now I'm going to do two groups of commands at the same time. The first group has the clone and the radio array commands, and the second group contains the commands resample, decrease object, and increase object. To start my customization, I go again to the script rmb.cpp. Already here in the script, I will look for a function that corresponds to the clone command. I go down the script and, as you can see, here is the clone function. But it's not just a single line of code. It has a block of commands, so that I can select correctly this whole clone function, I will pay attention to the opening curly bracket and close the curly bracket of the clone function's command block. That said, to select, I will select from the start of the clone function to the closing curly bracket of the command block of the clone. Once selected, I press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut, and I go up here until I find the flip function, because under the separator bar, it's the position where I need to paste the clone command, as you can see here in the list. So, being the right place, I press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste. And here, I have the clone function positioned in the place I want. Perfect. To finish the first group of commands, only the radio array command is missing. So, I have to go back here in the script 
and look for a function that corresponds to this command, okay? And right here, inside the if no cache conditional structure, I will find the function axial symmetry, which corresponds to the radio array command. And as you can see here, the radio array command is below the clone command. Knowing this, I will select the holy axial symmetry function. And I will press Ctrl X on my keyboard to cut. Right here, above the resample function, I'm going to paste it, pressing Ctrl V. The axial symmetry function. Great! My next step will be to add the separator bar. For this, I'm going to take this function menu separator and I'm going to select all of this function. Press Ctrl X on the keyboard and position it below the axial symmetry function. Once again, delete the spaces to the left. Great. Regarding the next group of commands, as you can see, the resample command is already in the correct place, right? Right. <laughs> My next step now is to find the functions corresponding to these two commands. And right here, as you can see, there are respectively the two functions corresponding to these two commands. What I will need to do is to select from the beginning of the ink density function to the end of the deck density function. And both being selected, I will press Ctrl X on the keyboard to cut. And after the closing curly bracket of the conditional structure if no cache, right here, I'm going to press Ctrl V on the keyboard to paste the two new functions, ok? Great! Now, I will clean up the script by deleting the empty lines that are here right now. That's it! It's time to prove to you that everything I have done here inside the script is correct. I will save the script. Close it, back to 3D code, press the OK button to confirm my chance. And when I press the right mouse button on the Rhino, as you can see, I have exactly the same commands from the two command groups as I planned, it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. I hope you have learned something new and as always, I will see you all in the next video. See you there.